love, Greek philosophy, Bible, science, and secular views on the essence of this profound emotion. What is love? How is it defined? And what type of love is required when looking for a life partner, someone who is kind, caring, compassionate, willing to admit fault, and work through hardships? Love is a complex emotion defined in many ways depending on the context and the cultural or personal background of the individuals involved. We will delve into the Greek philosophy of love and even see what the Bible says about love. We will also explore love from a scientific sense and finally from a secular view. Generally speaking, love is an intense feeling of deep affection and attachment towards someone or something. Love can be experienced in various forms, such as romantic, platonic, familial, or self-love. Love in Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy has long been fascinated with the concept of love, and several types of love have been identified and explored by philosophers over the centuries. Let's discuss the seven different types of love outlined in Greek philosophy and the views of several prominent philosophers on the subject. Here is the list of the seven types of love, from the most shallow to the most mature and profound kind of love. 1. Eros Eros is often associated with romantic love and sexual desire. Eros is a passionate form of love that seeks physical and emotional intimacy with another person. According to the philosopher Plato, Eros is a powerful force that can drive individuals to pursue beauty and truth. This love is often considered shallow, primarily driven by physical attraction and desire. 2. Philia Philia is often translated as friendship and refers to a deep emotional bond between two people. Philia is based on mutual respect, trust, and shared experiences. According to Aristotle, philia is a virtuous form of love that requires effort and commitment from both parties. He believed that the highest form of philia is the love between two ethical individuals, as they will strive to help each other achieve excellence. 3. Ludus Ludus is a playful form of love often associated with a romantic relationship's early stages. This type of love is characterized by flirtation, teasing, and a sense of lightheartedness. According to the philosopher Plato, Ludus is an integral part of Eros, it can help build intimacy and trust between two people. 4. Storge. Storge refers to the natural affection between family members, such as the love between parents and children or between siblings. Storge is often associated with a sense of familiarity, comfort, and loyalty. According to the philosopher Epictetus, storge is an instinctual form of love that requires no effort or conscious decision-making. 5. Pragma. Pragma is a practical form of love often associated with long-term relationships, such as marriages or partnerships. A sense of commitment, understanding, and compromise characterizes this type of love. According to the philosopher Aristotle, pragma is a mature form of love that requires patience and perseverance. 6. Philodia. Philodia refers to self-love. Two different forms of philodia have been identified in Greek philosophy. The first form is healthy self-love, which involves a sense of self-respect, self-esteem, and self-care. The second form is unhealthy self-love, which involves narcissism and a sense of superiority over others. According to the philosopher Aristotle, healthy self-love is essential for a virtuous life, allowing individuals to care for themselves and others. 7. Agape Agape is often called unconditional love. It is a selfless form of love that seeks to benefit others without expecting anything in return. This type of love is often associated with the love of God and the love of one's fellow human beings. According to the philosopher Plato, agape is the highest form of love. It is not based on physical attraction or desire, but is instead an expression of one's passion for the good of others. Greek philosophy has identified these seven different types of love, each with its unique characteristics and motivations. While every kind of love is special, and some are considered to be more shallow than others, they are all essential aspects of human existence. They can provide individuals with a sense of purpose, meaning, and fulfillment. There is no one combination of the seven loves, as described by the ancient Greeks, that is considered to be true love. The concept of true love is a complex and multifaceted one that can be difficult to define or quantify. While the seven loves, eros, philia, ludus, pragma, agape, philatia, and storga, can help us understand the different types of love that exist, true love often involves a combination of several of these elements. For example, true love may involve eros, the passionate romantic love that is often associated with the early stages of a relationship. However, it also typically requires philia, the deep, affectionate friendship that forms the foundation of a robust and enduring relationship. Additionally, true love often involves agape, a selfless, unconditional love that consists of putting the other person's needs before your own. True love is a complex and unique emotion that can manifest in many ways. A deep emotional connection, trust, respect, and a commitment to the well-being and happiness of the other person 
often characterize true love. Love in the biblical sense. As someone who is admittedly not religious, there can be benefits to consulting the Bible about the topic of love, even if one is not religious. The Bible is one of Western civilization's oldest and most influential texts. It has profoundly impacted art, literature, philosophy, and culture. Scholars and thinkers have studied and interpreted its teachings on love and relationships for centuries. They can offer valuable insights into the nature of love and how it can be expressed in healthy and fulfilling ways. Moreover, the Bible's teachings on love emphasize compassion, forgiveness, and selflessness, which are universally recognized as essential for healthy relationships. By exploring these teachings, one may gain a deeper understanding of the complexities of love and how it can be nurtured and sustained over time. Whether religious or not, exploring the Bible's teachings on love can provide insight and inspiration for anyone seeking to develop deeper and more meaningful relationships with others. Here are some verses from the King James Version of the Bible, the book of Proverbs, that talk about love. 1. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. Proverbs 10.12 this proverb from the Old Testament suggests that hatred tends to cause conflict and discord among people. In contrast, love has the power to forgive and overlook the faults and mistakes of others. When we hate someone or hold a grudge against them, we may be more likely to focus on their negative qualities and actions, leading to arguments and disagreements. On the other hand, when we love someone, we are more likely to focus on their positive attributes and activities, which can lead to a greater sense of understanding and empathy. The proverb encourages people to choose love over hatred. It is more likely to lead to harmony and forgiveness and less likely to cause strife and conflict. 2. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Proverbs 17, 9. This proverb from the Old Testament suggests that if someone covers up or forgives another person's mistake or wrongdoing, they seek love and promote unity. However, suppose someone continually brings up an issue or repeats an error made by someone else. In that case, they are likely to drive friends apart. The Proverbs first part says that when someone chooses to cover up or forgive another person's mistake, it is an act of love. It shows that they value the relationship and are willing to overlook the wrongdoing to maintain the friendship. The second part of the proverb warns against constantly bringing up past mistakes or grievances. Repeating a matter or continually bringing up a past issue can create tension and drive friends apart. It is better to forgive and move on rather than constantly rehashing old problems. Overall, this proverb promotes the idea of forgiveness and unity within relationships. It encourages individuals to be forgiving and to seek love rather than dwelling on past mistakes and driving friends apart. 3. A friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17.17 17. This verse from the book of Proverbs emphasizes the importance of true friendship and brotherhood. The verse means that a true friend will always love and support you no matter the circumstances, whether in good or bad times. In contrast, a brother is specifically mentioned as someone born to help and support during adversity. Essentially, the verse highlights the role of a friend and a brother in our lives. A friend is someone we choose to have in our lives and who chooses to be with us at all times. On the other hand, a brother is someone we are born into a family relationship with and who is meant to be a source of support during challenging times. Both friends and brothers are important and valuable relationships that we should cherish and appreciate. 4. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Proverbs 18.22 This verse from the book of Proverbs reflects the value of a good spouse or partner. It suggests that finding a good wife or husband is a blessing from God and that such a relationship should be treasured and appreciated. The verse explicitly states that finding a wife is a good thing, meaning having a partner can be a source of happiness, companionship, and support. It also suggests that finding a suitable spouse can bring favor from God, which may refer to the idea that a strong marriage pleases God and helps individuals live a fulfilling life. This verse encourages individuals to seek out and appreciate healthy, loving relationships, particularly in marriage. It reminds us of the value of a supportive partner. It suggests that such relationships can be a source of spiritual fulfillment and blessing. 5. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. Proverbs 8, 7. This verse from Proverbs 8. 7 says, True love is powerful and cannot be extinguished or drowned out, even by life's most significant trials and difficulties. The metaphor of many waters and floods represents nature's most overwhelming and powerful forces. 
yet they cannot put out the flame of love. The second part of the verse emphasizes the high value of love. Even if a person were to offer all of his possessions or wealth in exchange for love, it would still be considered worthless compared to the genuine article. This implies that love is priceless and cannot be bought or sold. 6. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Proverbs 3, 3, 4. These verses highlight the importance of love, forgiveness, and mercy, and emphasize the value of solid relationships with friends, family, and spouses. The Bible defines love in several ways, but one of the most well-known definitions is found in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 8a, which reads, Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Here is the King James Version of 1 Corinthians 13, 4-8a. Charity suffereth long and is kind, charity envieth not, charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Please note that in the King James Version, the word charity is used instead of love, as was the common usage when the translation was made. This passage describes love as being characterized by patience, kindness, humility, forgiveness, and a desire for truth and righteousness. It is not selfish, but instead seeks the good of others, and is willing to make sacrifices to achieve it. Love is also described as being persistent and enduring, never giving up on those who are loved. Other passages throughout the Bible further emphasize the importance of love and describe it as the greatest of all virtues. The King James Bible, also known as the Authorized Version, uses love in various contexts and meanings. Here are some other ways the King James Bible defines love. Charity. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1, 3, the King James Bible equates love with charity, stating that even if one has all the knowledge, faith, and good works in the world without charity, love, it is all in vain. Sacrificial love. In John 15, 13, the King James Bible states, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. This sentiment is an apparent reference to sacrificial love, where one is willing to give up their life for the sake of another. Unconditional love. In Romans 5, 8, the King James Bible states that God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This verse refers to God's unconditional love, suggesting he loves us regardless of our faults and shortcomings. Brotherly love. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 9, the King James Bible encourages believers to, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. This verse refers to the love between brothers and sisters in Christ, a selfless love that seeks the good of others. Love for God. In Deuteronomy 6, 5, the King James Bible commands believers to, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. This verse refers to the love that believers should have for God, characterized by wholehearted devotion, reverence, and obedience. Love is a complex and multifaceted emotion that can manifest in many ways. One way to distinguish between different types of love is to differentiate between genuine love and romantic love. True love refers to a deep and enduring affection for someone, involving trust, respect, and loyalty. Romantic love typically involves intense passion, infatuation, and longing for another person. The phrase romantic love is often focused on the individual rather than the relationship itself, refers to the common belief that romantic love prioritizes the individual's feelings and needs over the needs and well-being of the relationship as a whole. In other words, romantic love is often seen as a selfish or self-centered emotion in which the focus is on one's feelings and desires rather than on both partners' mutual needs and interests. This idea has been explored in various psychological and sociological studies on romantic relationships. For example, a study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships in 2011 found that people high in romantic love tend to focus more on their own emotional experiences and less concern for their partner's feelings and needs. Another study published in the journal Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin in 2015 found that people high in romantic love tend to view their relationship in a more idealized and self-centered way, often neglecting or minimizing the importance of their partner's contributions and needs. Intense emotions such as passion, infatuation, and longing 
often characterize romantic love. These feelings can be exhilarating and all-consuming, but they are also usually temporary and can fade over time. In contrast, genuine love involves a more profound, more enduring affection that is based on mutual respect, trust, and loyalty. There are several reasons why romantic love is less lasting than true love. First, romantic love is often based on physical attraction and infatuation, which can be fleeting. As the initial passion and excitement fade, couples may find that they do not have much in common or that their values and interests diverge. Second, romantic love is often focused on the individual rather than the relationship itself. When the focus is solely on one's desires and needs, the relationship may not be sustainable in the long term. On the other hand, genuine love is characterized by a mutual concern for the well-being of both partners and a willingness to work together to build a robust and lasting relationship. Finally, external factors such as societal norms and expectations can affect romantic love. When these external pressures are removed, couples may find their romantic feelings are not as strong as they once were. In contrast, true love is less susceptible to external forces, including those pressures from other people. It is based on a deep understanding and connection between partners. However, it is essential to note that this perspective on romantic love is not universally accepted and has been subject to debate among scholars and researchers. Some argue that romantic love can promote relationship satisfaction and commitment by encouraging individuals to prioritize their partner's needs and work towards mutual goals and interests. Overall, the idea that romantic love is often focused on the individual rather than the relationship itself is a complex and nuanced topic that has been studied and debated in various academic fields. Considering this topic's diverse perspectives and findings is essential before drawing any definitive conclusions. Love in the scientific sense. Love is a complex emotion that has fascinated human beings for centuries. While it is often considered a mystical or intangible force, the reality is that love can be explained by chemical and scientific processes in the brain. Let's explore the different stages of love and the chemicals involved in each stage. The three stages of love are lust, attraction, and companionship. These stages are not mutually exclusive. Many experience them in different orders or simultaneously. However, they can be generally defined as follows. Lust. Lust is the initial stage of love, characterized by sexual desire and physical attraction. This stage is driven by the release of testosterone and estrogen in both men and women. According to a study published in the Journal of Neuroscience, testosterone is associated with sexual desire and arousal in men, while estrogen is linked to sexual desire and response in women. Blacher et al., 2000. The surge of these hormones leads to increased blood flow and heart rate, which can create a feeling of excitement and anticipation. Attraction. Attraction is the second stage of love, characterized by infatuation and obsession with the object of one's desire. This stage is driven by a complex interplay of neurotransmitters, including dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Dopamine is associated with reward and pleasure, while norepinephrine is linked to adrenaline and the fight-or-flight response. Serotonin is associated with mood regulation and can create euphoria and happiness. According to a study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, releasing these neurotransmitters creates a rush that can be addictive and lead to obsessive thoughts and behaviors. Fisher et al., 2003. Companionship. Companionship is the third and final stage of love, characterized by deep attachment and emotional bonding. The release of hormones such as oxytocin and vasopressin drives this stage. Oxytocin, also known as the cuddle hormone, is associated with social bonding and maternal behavior. According to a study published in the journal Hormones and Behavior, the release of oxytocin is triggered by physical touch, such as hugging or holding hands, and can create feelings of trust and security. Uvnas Moberg, 1998. Vasopressin is associated with pair bonding and is particularly important in male-female relationships. According to a study published in the journal Nature, the release of vasopressin is associated with male territorial behavior and the formation of long-term bonds. Young et al., 1999. Scientifically speaking, Love is not simply a mystical or intangible force, but rather a complex interplay of chemical and scientific processes in the brain. The three stages of love, lust, attraction, and companionship, are each driven by different hormones and neurotransmitters. Understanding the science behind love can help us better understand our feelings and behaviors, ultimately leading to more fulfilling relationships. Further thoughts and areas of study. When looking for a life partner who is willing to admit fault and work through hardships, a few different types of love might be essential to consider. One is romantic love, which involves strong physical and emotional attraction towards a partner. 
Another is companionate love, which refers to the deep bond and friendship that develops over time between two people who share common values and interests. Additionally, a willingness to show empathy and compassion towards one another is essential, as well as a shared commitment to working through difficult times and actively communicating and resolving conflicts. Ultimately, the type of love that is required for a successful life partnership is unique to each individual and relationship. It's essential to take the time to get to know a potential partner, communicate openly and honestly, and establish a strong foundation of mutual respect and trust before making any long-term commitments. Cultivating a deep sense of understanding and compassion towards your partner is essential to build a healthy and long-lasting relationship. This sense of experience requires empathizing with their feelings and perspectives, even when you may not necessarily agree with them. In addition, it's crucial to develop practical and effective communication skills and to express your thoughts and emotions clearly and respectfully. Listening actively and responding thoughtfully to your partner's needs and concerns is also crucial for building a solid and lasting bond. It's also important to have shared values and goals that align with each other, such as a similar outlook on life, interests, and ambitions for the future. This similar outlook can create a sense of unity, mutual support, and a shared sense of purpose and direction in life. Ultimately, finding a life partner willing to admit fault and work through hardships requires deep emotional maturity, empathy, and commitment. By cultivating these qualities in ourselves and actively seeking them out in others, we can increase our chances of finding a fulfilling and meaningful life partnership. Another critical aspect of a healthy and lasting relationship is trust. Trust involves being reliable, honest, and open with your partner. When both partners trust each other, it creates a strong foundation of emotional security. It helps to build a deep sense of intimacy and connection. It's also essential to be willing to work through difficult times and overcome challenges together. This willingness requires a commitment to mutual support and a shared belief in the relationship's ability to weather any storm. It also means taking responsibility for your actions and being willing to admit fault when necessary. Respect is another crucial element in any successful relationship. This respect involves treating your partner with kindness, consideration, and understanding and recognizing their value and worth. When both partners have a deep respect for each other, it helps create a positive and supportive environment where both people can thrive and grow together. Finally, it's important to remember that relationships require ongoing effort and attention to thrive. This attention means being willing to actively work on your relationship, whether through regular communication, shared activities, and interests, or seeking out professional support when necessary. By prioritizing your relationship and investing time and energy into its growth and development, you can create a lasting and meaningful partnership that will stand the test of time. Another crucial aspect of a healthy and lasting relationship is balancing independence with interdependence. This balance means maintaining a sense of personal autonomy and individuality while fostering a strong and supportive connection with your partner. Maintaining independence means maintaining a sense of self and being able to pursue your own goals and interests outside of the relationship. This independence is vital for personal growth and fulfillment, as well as for maintaining a healthy balance of power and avoiding codependency. At the same time, cultivating interdependence means fostering a deep and meaningful connection with your partner. This connection involves being willing to share your feelings and vulnerabilities and supporting and relying on each other in times of need. By finding a healthy balance between independence and interdependence, you can create a relationship that is both fulfilling and sustainable over the long term. It's essential to recognize that relationships are dynamic and ever-changing. The ties will naturally shift and change as both partners grow and evolve. It's critical to remain flexible and adaptable and to be willing to communicate openly and honestly about your needs and desires as they arise. Yet another key aspect of a healthy and lasting relationship is the ability to practice forgiveness and work through conflict constructively. This ability means recognizing and acknowledging your role in any disputes or misunderstandings and being willing to take steps to repair the relationship and move forward in a positive direction. Forgiveness involves letting go of past hurts and resentments and focusing on the present and future. This focus doesn't mean forgetting about past wrongs or minimizing the impact they may have had on the relationship, but instead choosing as an adult to move forward in a way that prioritizes healing and growth. Constructive conflict resolution involves communicating your needs and concerns clearly and respectfully while also being willing to listen actively to your partner's perspective. It also consists of finding common ground and working together towards a mutually beneficial resolution. In addition to these qualities, it's essential to cultivate a sense of gratitude and appreciation for your partner. 
This sense means recognizing and acknowledging the positive attributes and actions they bring to the relationship and expressing your gratitude and appreciation sincerely and heartfeltly. By focusing on the positive aspects of your relationship and cultivating a sense of appreciation, you can build a solid and lasting bond that is characterized by love, trust, and mutual respect. Another critical aspect of a healthy and lasting relationship is maintaining a sense of fun and playfulness. While relationships can involve serious discussions and challenging times, making time for laughter, adventure, and shared experiences is essential. This means being willing to try new things together and to explore each other's interests and passions. It also involves finding ways to inject humor and fun into your daily interactions and approach life with curiosity and wonder. Maintaining a sense of fun and playfulness can help to strengthen your emotional bond and to create positive memories that can sustain you through more challenging times. It can also help to develop a sense of excitement and anticipation for the future and to foster a deep understanding of connection and shared purpose. Additionally, an essential element of a healthy and lasting relationship is the ability to express physical affection and intimacy in a comfortable and mutually satisfying way. This expression involves being willing to communicate openly about your needs and desires and at times prioritizing your partner's needs and wishes over your own. It's essential to recognize that physical affection and intimacy can take many forms, from holding hands and cuddling to sexual intimacy. The key is finding a balance that works for both partners and prioritizing clear communication, mutual respect, and ongoing consent. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires continuously investing time and energy into your relationship. This investment means setting aside time for regular date nights, engaging in shared activities and interests, and seeking professional support when necessary. By prioritizing these qualities and actively working to cultivate them in your relationship, you can create a partnership characterized by love, trust, respect, and mutual support. With these qualities in place, you can weather any storm and build a relationship that will stand the test of time and others who may subconsciously attempt to sabotage your relationship. In addition, a vital element of a healthy and lasting relationship is maintaining a sense of individual growth and personal development. While it's essential to prioritize the health and growth of the relationship, it's also important for each partner to pursue their individual interests, goals, and passions. This element means being willing to support and encourage your partner in their pursuits and pursuing your own interests and goals outside of the relationship. By maintaining a sense of individual growth and development, you can avoid becoming overly dependent on your partner and maintain a healthy sense of personal autonomy. This fosters true interdependence, the highest level in any relationship. At the same time, it's essential to prioritize the relationship's health and growth. This prioritization means being willing to communicate openly and honestly about your needs and desires and working together to find mutually beneficial solutions to any challenges. It also involves practicing empathy and understanding towards your partner and being ready to offer support and encouragement when they struggle. By cultivating a deep sense of connection and mutual support, you can build a relationship characterized by love, trust, and mutual respect. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires embracing change and uncertainty. While it's natural to crave stability and security in a relationship, it's essential to recognize that life is full of surprises and unexpected twists and turns. By embracing change and uncertainty, you can cultivate a sense of adaptability and resilience that will serve you well in the long term. This cultivation means letting go of old patterns and habits that no longer serve you and embracing new opportunities and experiences with an open mind and heart. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires a combination of qualities, trust, respect, communication, forgiveness, gratitude, a sense of fun and playfulness, a willingness to embrace change and uncertainty, and a commitment to individual growth and personal development. By prioritizing these qualities and actively working to cultivate them in your relationship, you can create a partnership that is fulfilling, sustainable, and deeply rewarding over the long term. Another crucial element in building a healthy and lasting relationship is cultivating a strong emotional connection with your partner. This element means being willing to share your thoughts, feelings, and vulnerabilities with your partner and to listen with empathy and understanding when they share their own. Emotional connection involves being attuned to your partner's needs and being able to provide support and comfort when they are struggling. It also involves offering validation and affirmation and celebrating their successes and achievements. At the same time, it's crucial to be able to express your own needs and desires in a way that is clear and respectful. 
This expression means being willing to assert the boundaries you've set for yourself and to communicate openly and honestly about what you need from your partner. In addition to emotional connection, building a healthy and lasting relationship also involves a willingness to work through conflicts and challenges together. This means being willing to engage in productive conflict resolution rather than avoiding or escalating conflicts. You can never build a healthy lifelong partnership if you avoid conflict instead of working constructively through hardship. Effective conflict resolution involves communicating openly and respectfully about your concerns while also being willing to listen to your partner's perspective and seeking mutually beneficial solutions to any challenges that arise. It's also important to recognize that conflicts and challenges are a natural part of any relationship and can serve as opportunities for growth and development. By approaching conflicts with a spirit of curiosity and a willingness to learn, you can strengthen your relationship and deepen your emotional connection with your partner. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires a willingness to be present and engaged with your partner daily. This willingness means prioritizing quality time together, engaging in meaningful conversations and shared experiences, and prioritizing ongoing communication, mutual support, and emotional connection. By cultivating these qualities and actively working to strengthen your relationship on an ongoing basis, you can build a partnership characterized by love, trust, and mutual respect, which will sustain you through the ups and downs of life. Equally important, a key element in building a healthy and lasting relationship is cultivating a sense of shared purpose and meaning. This element means being able to work together towards common goals and aspirations, and to support each other in the pursuit of those goals. Depending on the individual couple, shared purpose and meaning can take many forms. It might involve working together towards a shared vision for the future, such as starting a family, building a business, or traveling the world. Alternatively, it might involve a shared commitment to a particular cause or value, such as social justice, environmental sustainability, or spiritual growth. Whatever form it takes, shared purpose and meaning can be a powerful source of motivation and inspiration for a couple. It can help create a sense of shared identity and vision and provide a sense of direction and meaning in life. In addition to a shared purpose and meaning, building a healthy and lasting relationship also requires cultivating a sense of gratitude and appreciation for your partner. This cultivation means recognizing and celebrating their strengths and qualities and expressing your love and affection in meaningful ways. Expressing gratitude and appreciation can take many forms, from simple acts of kindness and affection to more elaborate gestures of love and commitment. It might involve writing love notes, giving thoughtful gifts, or simply listening attentively and showing interest in your partner's life. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires a continuous willingness to invest time, energy, and effort. It requires a commitment to ongoing communication, mutual support, emotional connection, shared purpose and meaning, and a sense of gratitude and appreciation. By prioritizing these elements and actively working to cultivate them in your relationship, you can build a partnership characterized by love, trust, and mutual respect, which will sustain you through the challenges and joys of life. Another critical aspect of building a healthy and lasting relationship is creating and maintaining healthy boundaries for yourself. Boundaries are essential for maintaining a sense of self and protecting your well-being and emotional health. Creating healthy boundaries involves identifying your needs, desires, and limitations, and clearly and respectfully communicating those needs to your partner. Remember, boundaries are limits you have set for yourself. Boundaries have nothing to do with what your partner or partners will or will not do. That involves agreements. It also means respecting your partner's boundaries and communicating effectively about areas where your needs or desires may differ. Healthy boundaries and agreements can take many different forms depending on the individual couple. They might involve setting limits on how much time you spend together or how much personal information you share. They might also include setting limits on harmful or destructive behaviors, such as substance abuse or emotional manipulation. Creating and maintaining healthy boundaries and agreements can be challenging. Still, it is essential to build a healthy and lasting relationship. By respecting each other's boundaries and your mutually agreed upon agreements, you can create a relationship based on mutual respect and trust, allowing both partners to thrive and grow. Finally, Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires a willingness to be flexible and adaptable in changing circumstances. Life is unpredictable. You and your partner will inevitably face challenges and obstacles. You should discuss worst-case scenarios, such as what happens if a partner loses a limb or develops a debilitating disease. You should also discuss living wills and store them in your medical records. While these are uncomfortable topics, it is essential to discuss them. My partner and I discussed this, and she created a living will that immensely helped her father decide whether to intubate at the end of her life. B. 
Being flexible and adaptable means being willing to adjust your expectations and plans as circumstances change and working together to find creative solutions to any challenges. It also means being patient and supportive as your partner or partners navigate their individual challenges and struggles. Another point to note is that an essential aspect of building a healthy and lasting relationship is the ability to handle conflicts and disagreements constructively. Conflict is inevitable in any relationship, and how you handle those conflicts can significantly impact the health and longevity of your partnership. Handling conflicts involves communicating effectively, listening actively, and expressing your needs and feelings in a respectful and non-judgmental way. It also consists of recognizing your role in the conflict and being willing to take responsibility for your actions and reactions. In addition, handling conflicts involves compromise and finding mutually acceptable solutions to disagreements. This handling of conflict means prioritizing the health and well-being of the relationship above individual desires or needs and being willing to make compromises to reach a mutually satisfactory outcome. Another critical aspect of handling conflicts is forgiving and letting go of past hurts and grievances. Holding on to grudges and resentments will create a toxic and damaging environment in a relationship. It will hinder partners from moving forward and growing together, especially if it's one-sided. If one partner needs more support to work through their flaws and personal issues than the other needs to be with someone with numerous serious problems, they are statistically more likely to end up alone when that partner pushes away the supportive one. For example, a study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships found that individuals with higher levels of attachment anxiety were likelier to push away their partners and experience more breakups. Attachment anxiety refers to a fear of rejection, abandonment, or being unloved. When someone has attachment anxiety, they may push away their partners to protect themselves from the pain of rejection or abandonment. Another study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that more self-critical and self-doubting individuals were more likely to experience difficulties in their romantic relationships. These individuals were more likely to push away their partners and experience more conflict, which could ultimately lead to the end of the relationship. Forgiveness involves being able to let go of anger and resentment and to release negative emotions constructively. It also consists of communicating honestly and openly about the impact of the hurtful behavior and working together to create a plan for moving forward and rebuilding trust. Handling conflicts is essential to building a healthy and lasting relationship. By communicating effectively, listening actively, compromising, and being willing to forgive and let go of past hurts, you can create a partnership characterized by mutual respect, trust, and a willingness to work together to overcome challenges and grow together over time. One additional aspect of building a healthy and lasting relationship is the importance of maintaining a sense of individual identity and autonomy within the partnership. While it is essential to cultivate a deep emotional connection and a shared sense of purpose and meaning, it is also necessary to maintain a sense of self and to pursue individual interests and goals. Maintaining individual identity involves communicating openly and honestly about your own needs and desires and being willing to support your partner in pursuing their interests and goals. It also consists in respecting each other's differences and individuality and creating a relationship that allows both partners to thrive as individuals and as a couple. In addition, maintaining individual identity involves maintaining healthy friendships and relationships outside of the partnership. It is crucial to have a support network of friends and family members who can provide emotional support and companionship and help you maintain a sense of perspective and balance in your life. By maintaining a sense of individual identity and autonomy within the partnership, you can create a relationship characterized by mutual respect, trust, and a shared sense of purpose and meaning, allowing both partners to grow and develop as individuals. This sense can be essential for building a healthy and lasting relationship, providing a solid foundation for a fulfilling and rewarding life together. Finally, it is crucial to prioritize the health and well-being of the relationship itself above individual desires or needs, this prioritization means being willing to make sacrifices and compromises for the sake of the relationship and putting aside personal egos and agendas to work towards a common goal. Prioritizing the health and well-being of the relationship involves communicating openly and honestly, expressing your needs and feelings in a non-judgmental and respectful way. It also consists of actively listening to your partner and seeking to understand their perspective even when you disagree. By prioritizing the health and well-being of the relationship, you can create a partnership characterized by mutual trust, respect, and a willingness to work together to overcome challenges and grow together over time. This prioritization is essential for building a healthy and lasting relationship, 
providing a solid foundation for a fulfilling and rewarding life together. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires all partners' continuous investment of time, energy, and effort. It requires prioritizing qualities such as trust, respect, a commitment to ongoing communication, forgiveness, gratitude, emotional connection, shared purpose and meaning, playfulness, healthy boundaries for yourself and healthy agreements for each other, and a willingness to work through challenges and conflict constructively. Emotional connection, mutual support, and a commitment to individual growth and personal development are also vital. Partners must be willing to work through conflicts and challenges constructively and cultivate a sense of shared purpose and meaning. By prioritizing these qualities and actively working to grow them in your relationship and actively working to strengthen your relationship on an ongoing basis, you can create a fulfilling, sustainable, and deeply enriching lifelong partnership characterized by love, trust, and mutual respect. Building a healthy and lasting relationship requires mutual support and a willingness to be flexible and adaptable in changing circumstances. By cultivating these qualities, you can create a partnership that will sustain you through the turbulence of life. The information I've provided is widely recognized and supported by many relationship experts, psychologists, and therapists. Some familiar sources that support the information I offered include John Gottman's The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work, Dr. Sue Johnson's Hold Me Tight, Dr. Harville Hendricks's Getting the Love You Want, the work of Esther Perel on relationships and sexuality, and the research and teachings of Dr. Brene Brown on vulnerability and shame. These sources provide valuable insights into the skills and practices essential for building healthy and lasting relationships. References used for this podcast are as follows. Achevedo and Aaron, 2012, looked at whether being in a long-term relationship affects romantic love. Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics is a philosophical work that discusses ethics and morality. Aaron, Paris, and Aaron, 1995, studied how falling in love changes a person's self-concept. Birnbaum and Race, 2016, researched how men and women handle breakups in romantic relationships. Birnbaum and Simpson, 2017, wrote about how interpersonal relationships affect the self. Blacher et al., 2000, studied the role of sex hormones in sexual function. Brown, 2012, wrote a book called Daring Greatly that explores how being vulnerable can transform our lives, love, parenting, and leadership. Epictetus's Anchoridion is a book that provides guidance on how to live a good life. Fisher, Aaron, and Brown, 2003, researched how romantic love is linked to the brain's mating system. Fisher, 2016, wrote about how lust, attraction, and attachment play a role in mammalian reproduction. Gottman, 2015, wrote a book called The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work that provides advice for building and maintaining a healthy marriage. Hatfield and Rapson, 2013, researched the connection between passionate love and sexual desire. Harvard Medical School, 2017, published an article on the science behind lust, attraction, and companionship. Hendricks, 2015, wrote a book called Getting the Love You Want that provides advice for couples. Johnson, 2008, wrote a book called Hold Me Tight that provides guidance for building a strong and lasting relationship. Langeslag and Van Streen, 2016, wrote about different strategies for regulating romantic love feelings. Makanova and Miller, 2019, researched why people stay in relationships and found that conflict resolution styles play a moderating role. Meyer and Pilconis, 2005, wrote about how social support affects well-being and outcomes. Murray, Holmes, and Griffin, 1996, researched how idealizing one's partner can lead to greater satisfaction in a relationship. Perel, 2006, wrote a book called Mating in Captivity that explores the connection between eroticism and long-term relationships. Pickett, Gardner, and Knowles, 2004, researched the need for social connection and the enhanced sensitivity to social cues that comes with it. Plato's Symposium is a philosophical work that discusses love and desire. Uvnes Moberg, 1998, wrote about how the hormone oxytocin may mediate the benefits of positive social interaction and emotions. Thanks for listening to today's episode. We've explored some interesting research on relationships and love, and hopefully you've gained some insights that can help you in your own relationships. Remember, love is a complex and multifaceted experience, and there are no easy answers or one-size-fits-all solutions. But by understanding some of the science and psychology behind love, we can approach our relationships with greater compassion, empathy, and understanding. Join us next time for more insights and discussions on a variety of topics. Thanks again for tuning in. 